Hello and welcome to episode 209 of the Mark and Me podcast. As always, I'm your host Mark. Now joining me on today's episode is the front man from the amazing band State Champs. I'm joined by Derek Descanio. State Champs for me are one of the best live bands on the scene right now. There's a reason they've been going so long and honestly are phenomenal. This is a great chat really inspiring and one of my favorite guests i've had on the podcast and that interview with derek will be coming up very shortly but before we get to that let's touch base and talk about my last episode it was only a couple of days ago and i was joined by nina bergman we got to sit down and talk all about her acting career her songwriting and so much more and the response was amazing and i want to say a massive thank you for nina for sharing the episode as well it helped me get some incredible download numbers and i really really appreciate it But today it's all about state champs. Me and Derek get deep and it's a really, really honest discussion and I absolutely love it from start to finish. So here's me and Derek talking all things music. So Derek, thanks for joining me today on the Mark and Me podcast. Of course, man. Anytime. Glad to be here. Derek, what I'd like to do today is for anyone that's tuning in that might be discovering your band for the first time is take it back right to the very start. So I want to know when you were growing up, what were those first albums that you bought maybe with your pocket money or as a part time job that you were earning money and you remember going to the record store and absolutely falling in love with straight away? You know, I, I go back to, you know, what made me want to start being in in a band and uh, discovering, you know, guitar and drums music. And that was really, I mean, I had a wide range, obviously, when I was a younger guy, the younger kid, I was into boy bands like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and then even Hanson and stuff. But then I got into Linkin Park and Eminem. But then when I really fell in love with pop punk, I think is when I found bands like Fall Out Boy and Paramore, discovering Paramore's Riot and uh, Fall Out Boy's Take This to Your Grave. Those were the never leave the CD player Walkmans and, uh, you know, my uh, my middle school headset. Um, those are the ones that maybe started wanting to sing and wanting to write my own songs and pick up a guitar. So I go back to the early Fall Out Boy, early Paramore days for myself, particularly. That's what I latch on to. I absolutely adore Paramore. Even now, I can't wait for their next album. I think they've got this energy. Their sound has completely evolved over the years. They've never stuck to the same sound, and I just have so much respect for them. I'm excited to see what they do. You know, they yeah. tend to they, they tend to try new things every single album. You know, and obviously, like you know, I can be nostalgic and be kind of that guy that's like, well, go back to the pop punk, go back to the riot. But honestly, brand new honest is one of my favorites of theirs too because it starts to you start to hear a little bit of a departure, but it's still got that that pop punk energy. But you start to see, hear something new. So uh, obviously, they went into like the '80s indie pop vibe with After Laughter on their last one. So who knows if they're going to kind of dive back into their roots, or you know, I'm just kind of curious. And with those bands that you've mentioned when you were growing up, obviously I know the early bands changed from like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and all that. Obviously you get to discover guitars, drums, bass, stuff like that. When you started going to gigs, can you remember that first gig you went to where you were like in awe and you could see that band playing in front of you and realised it wasn't just a CD that you were listening to, it was a band that could go and, you know, produce those songs in front of you and make your rib kind of chain, like shake from the bass. You had that little hairs on your neck sticking up and you remember coming away thinking, oh my God, that's what I want to do. You know, when, when I think about that and I think about starting to see some of those bands live for the first time and a good chance when I got to see a chunk of them was the first time I ever went to Vans Warped Tour in the States and that was 2005. Um, and I was 12 years old, you know, I had to beg my mom to bring me, uh, we took a trip from New York where I live to Massachusetts. It was the closest date to us. And, uh, I still will hold strong on 2005 being the best year for lineup of Warped Tour. So I got to see Fall Out Boy for the first time. I got to see, um, Hawthorne Heights and Thrice and Census Fail and My Chemical Romance and The Offspring and Avenged Sevenfold and Motion City Soundtrack. And oh those God. were all bands at the time. And that is a fucking lineup, if I may say. Sorry if I can't swear. No, you can uh, swear what you like. Uh, Thrice are my favorite band of all time. Uh, they are, now you're talking to me, like Thrice for me are uh, Dustin's vocals, Tepe's guitar work. They are fucking incredible. I literally can't get enough of Thrice. Man, and so I still have my ticket from that 2005 Warped Tour, and that was that was when I was like, man, this is what I want to do. All I want to do is play on this tour, and I want to meet all of these bands, and I want to make friends, and I want to be out in the sun, and I want to be grinding out there in the warp Tour scene. And uh, I wasn't going to stop until I could make it my own my own dream, you know? 
did it did it become hard because obviously there's a lot of people that are in bands uh growing up i was in bands or a lot of my friends were in bands but to actually make it not just do battle of the bands or play these tiny shows did you really believe that you could do it because it's obviously a lot um it's a real challenge isn't it breaking through into the music industry you've got to be in the right place at the right time you need some luck you need all the skill you need experience but it's never easy there's so many good bands out there that don't make it did you ever think to yourself there's an option that this won't work out or were you like fuck it i am so determined i want to do this i want to be like these guys that i've seen i have to do this i think it was a little bit of everything like you said you know it was like right place at the right time, a little bit of luck, but a lot of determination and a lot of motivation to just want to be out there playing shows and grinding it. You know, when State Champs first started, yes, we were playing, we were paying to play and we were selling tickets, a number of tickets just to be that opening slot for our favorite bands. And we would even do Battle of the Bands. It's funny, we're called State Champs. We've never won a single Battle of the Bands that we've ever had. <laughs> we've actually lost a so, uh, so, so we, we there, but we were still just so excited to be even going out of town on a weekend to play a new show to new people, even though nobody knew who we were, you know, but then started, then we started having a big home base, uh, home, uh, like home fan base of our yeah. friends and family and peers and outsiders. And then it started happening on the, on the outskirts of town. And then it started happening out of state on the weekend. So we saw it's kind of slowly building and that got us more excited than anything. So I, but you're right. It was oversaturated with lots and lots of bands at that time. There was a big pop punk revival right around 2010, 2011 when we started. So how were we really going to break through or be noticed? And we were, we were, I was emailing all the record labels and everybody was just like, yeah, thanks for sending it over, but no big deal. And then there was really only one ever email I got back from a record label and it's it was from pure noise records in 2012 and they were the only one that took an interest to us and here we are 10 years later and we're still signed to that label so thank god they answered so when you formed this band and you obviously wanted to make state champs did you have a kind of sound you wanted to go after or was it a case of being with those creative people in a room and just seeing what happened because it's hard isn't it when you listen to a lot of bands you get influenced with your songwriting it's hard to avoid sounding like some of your favorite bands because you're so captivated in their sound morning day and night so was it something where you're like oh i just want to be a band that can play a warp tour or i want to be a band that could do you know, uh, these certain gigs or festivals, or was it just a case of, we'll just see what we come up with. We'll all bring our influences together into a big pot and just see what happens. Yeah, it was tough, man, because, you know, we did, I did want to kind of captivate how a lot of my favorite bands sounded at the time. When we signed to Pure Noise Records, I was in love with this band, The Story, so far. And I wanted to do exactly everything that they did. And I wanted to look like them and sound like them. But I Obviously, we signed to that same record label. So yeah. when, when the owner of the record label asked me, who do you like? I was like, I love the story so far, man. I want to do that. And they were like, well, you can't do that because they're already doing that. Who else you got? Who else do you like? Or what else do you like to do? So I was like, well, I mean, I like these bigger production bands like A Date Remember and All Time Low. And he was like, oh, great, man, because you have a great voice and we want to, and, and you should be doing stuff like that, man. Shoot bigger, shoot higher than that. So we started kind of like, you know, diving into the production side of things and really trying to build and produce songs that we were like really excited about and that weren't just like the fast and cool guy, tough guy, pop punk stuff. So I think we meshed in a little bit of that hardcore influence stuff, but then also some like bigger produced and poppier and glossier things and came up with our sound that is State Champs and then kind of formed it into you know, our sound of our own that people look after now as well. So uh, it took a little bit though, you know, we had to kind of take multiple influences and kind of find our way. And being the front man and obviously trying to win those crowds over, those early gigs that you did when you weren't headlining and you said, you know, you're doing Battle of the Bands and you're doing these small shows trying to build up a fan base. Did you ever find it really nervous and really hard to kind of go on stage and win a crowd over, especially if you're supporting another band and people are paying to see that headline act? Did you kind of find it a challenge to go on stage and hope that someone will come up to you after the end and say, fucking hell you rocked or buy a t-shirt or buy an album is it kind of hard to win people over that aren't there for you yeah i think we noticed that pretty early that 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 was going to be a challenge but if anything though i think it lit a fire on us it really did it kind of like we kind of liked that pressure of having to win to win a crowd over because we knew no one was there to see us at the beginning 
we had a we had a point to prove and we had something that we wanted to showcase that is our own and we fell in love with our own live show and performing to people that had never heard of us before we still say to this day that if you're going to come listen to state champs for the first time and you want to be just you want to discover a new band come see the live show we'd rather you see a live performance of us before you even hear the record if you do hear the record and then come see the live show totally cool but we rely on our live show and we were very stoked to just get out there and be like this is your new favorite band. And, you know, I'm going to be at the merch table after come say hi. I was out there meeting everybody and I wanted to like to to grind and to really like make a presence in the scene. And uh, luckily it, it, it won ourselves over a little bit in the beginning. And uh, we still do that same thing. I still I still go out to the merch table. I still want to mingle with fans, with new fans, old fans, and kind of just uh, keep pushing the limits on our live performance. I think it's really important. Some of the bands that I idolize that have been going 20 years, over 20 years, because they've got so big, Incubus, Deftones, you know, they, they have such an established sound. They've earned the right that you're never going to meet them. You know, if you stay by the tour bus, you're probably not going to even get a photo or anything. But to hear that you still take the time, meet the fans. I saw one of your tweets about how you've signed people's vapes and stuff. You know, you're taking your time to look after the fans. And that is so important. And I think there should never be that divide between you and the fans. No, definitely. Like sometimes people like to say, well, you know, if you if you're so accessible, then it's not as exclusive to the fans. I don't really believe in that. I like hanging out after the shows. I'll meet everybody that's out by the buses. I'll go to the merch table when I can. Sometimes it's a little tough. I don't want to be yeah. out there while other bands are playing. I feel like that's a little rude and whatnot. But if there's a big chunk of time or festivals and stuff like that, I'll absolutely be walking around. It's about it's pretty easy to find me, you know. So um, uh, yeah, it's important to give back to those that have let us do what we do and continue to let us do what we do. We don't have a career without the fans, man. So why aren't we going to pay it back and like at least give some thanks and hang out? And I'd just be bored anyway. I'd just be sitting around in a dressing room. Why not go mingle and hang out with other people? It's so refreshing to hear, man. And that's something that I respect a lot. It's really, really good and positive to hear that. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's important to me. And with gigging, obviously you've been doing it now for 12 years. It must be crazy. It must not feel that long. You know, you said 2010 is when the band formed. Here we are 12 years later. Do you still have those butterflies in your stomach before you go on stage? Do you still get that kind of anxiety of, oh my fucking God, like this is real. We've got to try and put on a show tonight and entertain thousands of people. And we really want to kick ass every night and put on the best show. Surely that never leaves you. No, you know, it doesn't. It's funny. I get this a lot. and People are like, yeah, it must be no big deal. Just another day at the office for you and stuff. But it's not, man. Every time I walk up and I put my in-ear monitors on, I put my pack on, I get ready, I get handed my microphone. You can't help but get a little fire inside of you and the, bu and the butterflies start. They come every single time. I don't think they'll ever go away. And if they do, I think there's something seriously wrong. And maybe we're not doing it for the right reasons because it, it gets me going. And like, what I really don't like, though, is the waiting game. Say if there's like technical difficulties or if I get ready too early and I just start pacing around, then then it's a little too much for me. You know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes before the show, I'm like, all right, I just want to get up there. Because then once you walk out on stage and you see the crowd, you see them start jumping around, you see them singing every word, man. That's why we do it. That's that's the big payoff, isn't it? So um, but no, the butterflies don't go away. And especially on the big ones, when we go out and do a new big festival that we've never done before, or if we go out and we play one of the biggest headline shows at a new bigger room than the last time we were there, you know, that that's when uh, we have to start like kind of taking care of each other in the band. We look at each other like our drummer gets so nervous. He's always like, bro, tell me I'm going to be good. Tell me I'm going to do a good job tonight, man. <laughs> so I'd be like, Evan, you're going to you're going to be great, man. We got to like, we still have to do that to each other. It's so funny after 12 years, like we still act like little kids, but that's, that's the thrill of it. And that's why we love it. I think that's why you are successful. I think that's why you keep on growing. You keep evolving uh, your new album, Kings of the New Age, which everyone is raving about. I've listened to it. I love it. I think, I think you still have the same appetite and the same drive that you had 12 years ago, but even on another level because you've still got points to prove. You still aren't complacent on stage. You're not just getting through a show. You still are in the same mindset as the band that wanted to try and break into the scene. Yeah, for sure. And if anything, like now we have some more reasons to prove it because of the resurgence of, yeah. of rock and roll right now. I think it's a huge thing that's happening. I think it's great for guitar and drums music and great for pop punk, especially with what we're doing. Um, and whatever reasons that that's happening doesn't matter to me, but I just love that we can hear it. You can turn on the mainstream radio, pop radio, and you're hearing guitars and drums. I think that's so important and we should be taking advantage of it. So um, that being said, 
with, especially with pandemic happening and, and now live music coming back and us being able to have our jobs back, there's such a motivation and there's such a, a hype around it. So we're rallying around each other now that we haven't, like the guys in the band, we haven't been able to do this in a while. So it's showing every time we step on stage that people have been anxiously waiting for this to come back. And uh, we're definitely taking full advantage of it. One with the record release and two with a headline tour to follow it up. So we're, we're smashing it right now, man. It feels good. It's great as well for the British music scene. So we've had bands like Architects and Don Broco, and they've been number one in our album chart, which is just unheard of. So there really is a really big drive for decent guitar, melodic rock with some sort of pop elements that are just everyone's loving. You know, they're playing arenas over here and selling them out. It's incredible. We've got stuff like Slam Dunk and Download Festival, and it just feels like everyone is starting to love decent music again. I don't put the radio on and hear utter crap. I hear great bands again. Yeah, it's it feels, it's good, man. I get kind of jealous of you guys over here in the UK. You know, it's it, it, because of that, you know, the rock and roll is thriving some, a little bit more than it is in the US. But the US is also, I mean, you've got Machine Gun Kelly at the top of the charts in the US. So it's like, you know, it, it, it does come full circle with that kind of thing. I don't think there'll be a time where we see like, I mean, who knows? Let's bring me the horizon do very well in the u.s as well Avril yeah. Lavigne is coming back like there's so much of that happening and, and stuff that's only going to help a band like ours who are still trying to make that next step up to that kind of level but breaking through the small pop punk scene if you will um in the past few years and four albums in it feels good to be still making stepping stones and uh still have goals to achieve you know even we always have a bucket list but it's like when we reach one thing we add more goals to it so we're always goal oriented and we always want to make a next step up is, is that why you think you're still going strong after 12 years because i've found a lot of my favorite bands break up after two or three albums and i'm gutted it's normally because they haven't got that huge record label so they can't market themselves or they just haven't got the sound to be poppy enough to sell enough records but their musicianship and their songwriting is unbelievable but they just don't have it so the longevity of the band never happens but for you guys, 12 years is a is a long time in the music scene at the moment. Not many bands get past their second or third album unless then they become kind of established and then you, they get 10 albums. You become like Metallica or Tool and you're there for years. But, you know, you guys have been going 12 years and you, you don't sound like anyone that wants to slow down. No, we don't. And it's funny, man. And I think you're exactly right where some of those bands, they put out two or three albums maybe, and then there's just like a flat line or they end up breaking up. And that could be for plenty of different reasons. Like you said, maybe the sound just isn't there and there's no progression. Um, but maybe it's stuff within the camp itself, you know, after doing it for even seven or eight years, you know, we started to realize hey, do we even like each other anymore? We had to kind of do team building exercises. Sometimes it's just personal things. But uh, luckily, like we found a way to kind of keep um, our like personal relationships awesome. We find ways to be motivated and excited about being in the studio together and find those sounds and those new things, new collaborators that we want to work with, producers and writers and stuff. And that makes us stoked on music. Um, but we definitely hit those low points where it's like, is there a next step for us? You know, is there, what, what can we do that's different or bigger than what we've done now? So I think it's been important for us to always add to that list like i've said before it was like oh we want to do warp tour great now what do we want to do well we want to headline warp tour oh we want to do we want to do download oh now we want to be on the download main stage okay good let's let's strive for that we want to be on the reading and leads main stage then we got that awesome now we just want to climb up the ranks and we want to play bigger rooms you know we're headlining like o2 canish town in london now we want to do roundhouse let's see if we can sell that out we did that you know what's next and it's exciting to us so we're always going to be you know, pushing the limits and making sure that there's no ceiling. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what's made it fun for us. It sounds exciting just hearing you talk about it, you know, how you've seen those venues grow and those stages grow and you see yourself go further up the bill and then onto the main stage and hopefully the next time it's the bit further up and, you know, it's it's incredible to hear. But you did mention then there's low points and not many bands ever are open or honest enough to discuss this. But during stuff like the lockdown, I think that's a point for many bands to take a bit of time out and they could establish themselves as, oh my God, like we needed this break. We were burning out. Uh, we've now got a chance to finish those songs we haven't finished. We can write, we can not tour, but also in the same way, it can be a time when you're like, oh my God, like I'm not sure if I want it anymore. So how, how did it work out for you mentally yourself? Were you like 
frustrated and that you couldn't go out there and do what you do best and perform songs live and write music and be in a room full of people or did you find it a bit of a welcomed time out and a bit of a break for you to get your head together and know exactly what you want next it's pretty funny when I say this and it's, I mean, I don't know if it's funny, but it's just kind of interesting the way that I talk about the pandemic and how it was kind of a blessing in disguise, if you will, because yeah, one, we were kind of pretty burnt out from touring. We had exhausted ourselves three albums in and done as much as we could. So it was nice to take a step back from that, but we didn't know the pandemic and the lockdown was going to last two years. So, you know, it just kept being extended and extended. So we didn't know what to do, but also at the end of that touring, like right before pandemic hit, Personally, I started having some issues with my voice vocally from when I when we were touring, I started to hear like, you know, it was just being kind of worn down and it was sounding different. And I kind of needed some time away from that too to kind of work on technique and start working with vocal coaches for the first time. You know, I spent 10 years touring and I had never really had professional training of how my voice works. I kind of had my guard up from that. I was always like, I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. I'm the best, you know, and I was like kind of ignorant about it. So when I started having it, issues and I was noticing it my band was noticing it that was right before the lockdown and we had plans to keep touring through the lockdown so that being kind of taken away from us and us being able like to take the time and step back was nice for me it really was so I got the help that I needed I saw some doctors and you know you got to take make some changes to your lifestyle this and that it was all the right time for me to kind of step and like like kick myself in the ass a little bit and be like okay man you want to sustain your career you want to make sure you can do this as long as you can so that I did end up doing and it took me a little while to kind of like teach myself new ways and work on that, which was nice. But then also, um, you're right, then we started not having deadlines for stuff like recording and, and uh, releasing albums. And that was special to us, too. We got to take, you know, well, about two years to uh, write as many songs as we could work with as many different people as we could find cool features for an album and just kind of start working on a track list and, and, and decide on what the, tra- the new chapter is and what our new step in what direction would be for the band so um it was like i said just a blessing in disguise to have that much time to take a step back realize what we want to do and work on myself personally to get ourselves ready for when touring comes back and when we can get ready for a new record rollout and uh here we are now and it's definitely paid off because the shows are thriving my voice feels great and uh everyone's screaming the songs back at us so Uh, You know, it wasn't it wasn't a a pleasant time just sitting at home for that whole time, like, you know, during pandemic, but um, it paid off for career wise, if I may say so, you know. Does it kind of make you reevaluate everything in the way that you'll never take anything for granted? And I'm not saying you ever did, but as a band, I say I, I, there must have been a point when you thought, are we ever actually ever going to be able to play live again? Because like you said, the festivals here got put off and I thought, okay, it's only six months. We'll all be back to normal again. Then it was the next round of Reading and Leeds or download. And then the next year, and I was like, fucking hell, we've had two summers of no playing and seeing bands live. But I wasn't the band playing. I was just the audience enjoying live music. So being in the shoes of someone performing, was there a moment when you thought, are we actually ever going to be able to do this again? Yeah, I think that was a thing. We started being like, man, or, or is it just going to be a totally different setting? You know, is there, is there just, is this how shows are going to go now when they first started coming back and they were doing these little pods and stuff or like, you know, God forbid, like, like you got, you got to put masks on everybody in a, in a, in a over a hundred cap room, got like, you know, or a thousand people all with masks on at a rock show. And I can't tell if they're singing my words, if they even know the words, that sounds like a nightmare, man. So um, the, it was weird. And we were like, if we ever get back to a point where we're, we're at a sold out thousand pack room, thousands of people, and it's like a normal thing, we better fucking kill it. We better do as well as we can. And we better make sure that like, we play the show as if it is our last, because we don't know what could happen again. So I think we're taking that into effect very much. So on this headline tour we're on right now, we're going out on stage and losing ourselves and the crowd is doing it with us as well. And uh, just you know, with that thing in mind where it's like anything can happen happen and you don't know how long this is going to last it could drop at the snap of a finger so you got to leave it all out there and that's what we've been doing and how's it feel at the moment because i feel like as a fan of your band and someone that's followed you for years you're now at your peak and that can keep going but i believe that your video on youtube getting i think a million views in four days your new album for me is some of the best music you've ever put out there your live show is the best it's been you have this energy and desire to just go higher and higher 
it must feel fucking awesome right now. It must feel like you're in a bit of a bubble that you don't want to pop because everything right now feels like it's at its best that it could be. It feels amazing, man. Just for, it's such a prideful feeling now, obviously, like now that we're back to some normalcy and we've got the album out and it's the reception has just been fucking amazing, man. You know, like that, like those views racking up and the streams are just going bonkers. So to us, it's a bit of a celebration, but also it's like, a it's a gift of our hard work and our kind of like um, perseverance, if you will, through the time. So we're making sure that we're, doing everything that we can to enjoy the moment and keep riding this wave, you know, but we're off to a great start as far as the record release goes, man. And we can't wait to continue it like through the rest of this UK Euro run into the U S run. And then we want to get back here as soon as we can, because uh, we'll never stop coming to the UK. It's so fun over here. And my final question for you and what I do on the Mark and me podcast will make it as original as I can is anyone that's come on the show. And I find that musicians and people in bands find this the hardest question I ask you on the spot to pick the outro piece of music that's played today. So after this interview is all edited, wrapped up and out there for the world to listen to, the final piece of music that's played on the podcast is actually chosen by the guest. So you get to choose it today. So what is a song that means an awful lot to you? It can be any song by any band from any genre or just a piece of music that you fucking love. But as this episode is all done, what is the song that when I ask the question comes to your heart, your head, your soul straight away that you want to play during the final moments of this podcast today? Uh, while you while you were saying that and asking that, I was like, oh, God, this sounds so hard. But, I, but there's, <laughs> one, there's one song that immediately went to me. I know, obviously, I was talking about my love for Paramore and yeah. uh, you, you mentioned it as well. So I think we can kind of agree on that. And I'm going to pick, um, you know, talking about all the, the pride that I have for what I do and, and just the, like I said, perseverance and almost feeling just like, uh, you know, that this is what I'm meant to do. Um, and this is why, why, like everything happens for a reason, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to choose the song by Paramore called Born for This off of Riot. I think it's a very just like statement made thing by Haley Williams. And it's something that I, that still influences me, those lyrics in that song. So I'm going to leave with that Born for This by Paramore. I fucking love it, dude. And Hayley Williams, for me, is one of my idols. Her solo work that she's done recently, I can't get over. I don't know how she put those two albums out. I don't know how they keep doing it with Paramore. I don't know how they do it, but I'm not complaining. And I just, I'm looking forward to what they're doing next. Amen. Derek, thank you so much for coming on the Mark and Me podcast. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on. I'm a, Like I've said, I'm, I, I get to do this all day, every day and talk to lots of different people, but I'm a huge fan of your music, your songwriting. I love the fact that you're going on to a new level and I just, I'm so excited for this journey ahead of you because it feels like even though it's 12 years in, I truly believe you've only just started and there's so much more ahead and to see these stages get announced at festivals and see your name go up there and up there, it's only a matter of time until I'm seeing Reading and Leeds a huge headline act and you're just under ready to be given that crown to headline so honestly keep up the amazing work dude thanks man we're just getting started buckle in thanks again so there it is there's my interview with me and the amazing derek from the awesome band state champs they're a band that you need to go and see live if you see any dates announced anytime soon around you go and get a ticket they are phenomenal They're an amazing band and I'm so grateful for Derek for coming on the podcast. I really hope all you guys at home will go and check out the band if you aren't already fans of them because state champs are just unreal. If you really enjoyed today's episode, all that I ask is you share the episode on your social media networks, something like Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. It's a touch of a button and costs you absolutely nothing, but honestly can make a whole difference to Mark and me. Maybe someone will see it on your Facebook wall, your Twitter page or your Instagram. It really does make a difference. So if you've enjoyed today, hit that share, retweet button, or just post it on your stories. It really means a lot. And if you've really enjoyed today's episode, I do have a Patreon page. The link is on markandme.com, and you can sign up on there for as little as £1 per month. For that, you're getting a guaranteed episode, two or three episodes per week, yep, not per month, per week, a welcome badge, which is an exclusive badge, and also some amazing prizes thanks to the guys at Richer Sounds. It's a great opportunity to support the podcast and all the money that you invest goes right back into the production of this podcast. I'm a one-man team and it goes a long way. I'll be back in only a few days' time with a brand new episode. So until then, listen to State Champs, take care of yourself, and I'll see you all very soon.